Christian and I'm happy. I said, but it's only fair that you read. I'm a Muslim. If you gave me some material about Christianity, I have nothing to lose because I believe I'm upon the truth. I will read it, get extra information. If you feel the same way, what do you have to lose? If you think you're on the truth, read. There's no harm in, in looking into something else. She said, no, no, no need. You pray five times a day? Said, you pray five times a day? Said, yeah. Said, my, my mudir also prays five times a day. But he's screaming all day. Bad character, you know, mean, disrespectful, and so on and so forth. I don't want Islam like that. Because of the way the boss is treating that employee. They don't even want to hear it. And some of us brothers and sisters are bad like that. We are pushing the people away from the deen of Allah with the way we act. And this is not befitting. Take it easy. Smile. You know, if someone is not at war with you, which is the case with the non-Muslims here, then they have a particular treatment that they deserve, which Allah had stipulated in the Qur'an, and it was directed by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Frowning is not going to get you anywhere. Screaming is not going to get you anywhere either. So I remind myself of you to get involved in this da'wah. Nah? Perhaps Allah will guide someone to Islam through you, and it will be better for you than the red camels. Which is the most valuable asset the Arabs had during that time. In this day and time, just put, consider a castle, villa, Rolls Royce, Bentley, uh, Jaguar, whatever cars or things you think are fancy. Just all that. It's better for you than all that. Rather the whole dunya and whatever is upon it. If Allah guides one person to Islam through you, or one misguided Muslim to practice Islam through you. Both are applicable, bi'ithnillah. Tayyip. Now... This is the good stuff, the good stuff. But whoever does not do that, he will get the opposite. You see, now we said Allah promised you do believe, you have faith, you do righteous deeds, you will have a good life. On the other hand, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضنكا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Whosoever, excuse me, turns away, turns away from the remembrance of Allah. Everything that involves Islam, because it's all the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Quran and the Sunnah. Whosoever turns away, then verily we shall make them lead a miserable life. Promise. Hayatan dunka. Ma'ishatan afwan dunka. Miserable, tight, constricted life. And we will resurrect him with the rest of the people on the day of judgment blind. قال رب لما حشرتني أعمى وقد كنت بصيرا قال كذلك أتتك آياتنا فنسيتها وكذلك اليوم تنسى. He or she will say, My Lord, why am I blind today? Even though I used to see back in the dunya, I didn't have any problems with my eyesight. It will be said, such our signs, verses, proofs, evidences, reminders came to you, but you forgot about them. And similarly, today you shall be forgotten. So then when you don't do iman and righteous deeds, you are guaranteed a miserable life. No matter how fat your pockets are, and how good your air condition is in this heat, and how comfortable is your leather seat, you will not be happy. You're always complaining, you're always upset, and you're always dissatisfied with the dunya. And the deen. This is the result. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Muslim, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٍ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ شَرَّا شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ دَرَّا صَبَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, How wondrous is the affair of the believer. Amazing is the affair of the believer. All of his affair is good. If something good happens to him, he is thankful to Allah, and that is good for him. And if something bad happens to him, he bears with patience, and that is good for him. And this is not applicable to anyone except the believer. No matter what happens, you're happy. Calamity, 
you're patient, you're happy. You make extra money, get a new job, life gets better, a new child comes to your life, you're thankful to Allah. It's good for you. So in this case, whatever happens to you, you're still going to be happy. And this, uh, the Prophet said, this is amazing. Because it doesn't happen for anyone else. Only the believer who believes in Allah, believes in the qadr of Allah, believes in the wisdom of Allah, believes in the mercy of Allah, will be satisfied with whatever happens to him. Even the calamity, when you remember that it happened to you from the most merciful, the most merciful, the most wise, then you should be content. You should, be, you should have contentment with that decree of Allah because it is good for you. Perhaps it's a sin that you committed that Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed that you, it is expiated today so you will not be responsible for it on the day of judgment. And that is good for you. You see? And this is only for who? The believer. Which means that we should increase our iman. Strive to believe. Don't be a lousy believer. We have so many of those nowadays. We're happy to say we have a billion Muslims over the world and so on and so forth. But let us look at the Muslims, the billion. What are, the, what are we doing? Where are those who are living upon the deen of Islam? Where are the practicing ones? Where are the ones who adhere to the teachings inwardly and outwardly? We can, there are not that many brothers and sisters in Islam. You know that. We have a lot of numbers. Many people don't pray. But they still are counted among the Muslims when they come to statistics. Many of them believe in, in deviant belief that, that is foreign to the correct sound belief and they're still counted among the Muslims. But that's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for numbers. We're looking for quality. Be, be a true believer. When the reminder comes to you from Allah's Messenger, you put it into practice. That's belief. That means you, you trust Allah. You believe in Allah. That's why you carry out the obligations and you stay away from the prohibitions. That is the manifestation of your belief. Secondly, and relevant to what I mentioned earlier, being kind to people. Being kind to people. Treat people nicely. Your Muslim brothers and sisters. Because we have been attacked by a wave of ignorance and racism slash nationalism and tribalism. Sorry about all these isms. But this is what it is. I am from, you know, this country, so you are nothing. Nothing. So when I want something from you, I scream at you. Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. Excuse me, man. Who are you? Who are you? This is your Muslim brother. He has a right to be treated with respect. This is not the quality of the believers, but this is a sickness among many people today who may appear to be adhering to the deen of Islam outwardly, but in essence they are very much off the true righteous path. Allah mentioned in the Qur'an, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما There is no goodness in much of their private conversations except the one who commands sadaqa, charity and it's all various, in all of its various branches أو معروف or any goodness أو إصلاح بين الناس or conciliation between the people There's no goodness in a lot of the talk that the people have unless it's one of these three Either some sadaqa you're commanding someone to give or some goodness that you're enjoining or trying to con- reconcile between contending brothers and sisters in Islam. And Allah says, and whosoever does that seek in Allah's pleasure, then verily we shall give him a great reward. 